Hello, everybody. Welcome. I got an experimental video today. We're gonna do, we're gonna do to see if y'all to see if y'all like this. I started to ask, but it was just a quick thing. This is not gonna be a very long video, probably. I'm gonna show some of the ins and outs of what I'm gonna do, and we'll see if if anybody likes it. Now. This video is not a, this is a practical solution to a regular problem video. It's not. It's not going to be that. It's going to be, a, I found something that's unusable, and I want to try to make it usable again. Is it worth the time to do it? Absolutely not. Nope, it's not. Not in the country that we live in uh, with things the way they are readily available and accessible. But if you are somewhere where things are not that way, could it be a viable solution to fix something? And the answer is yes. If you have more time than you have anything else, then fixing things makes a lot of sense. And that's part of the things that, that I try to go over, like making the gasket and stuff like that. If you can't get it, you can't get it. If you can't get it, it don't make sense. If you can't get it, it makes good sense. I've got something here I think y'all are going to love, I think. All right. I found this pair of ice grips yesterday in some of Dad's old stuff down there. I don't know if you can see up in there, but the threads are practically gone. The spring's rotted off. It's still there. But this piece actually does move. This will move. Well, this will move. This does not. Uh... The tab does move. The screw obviously does not move. Uh, they they don't move. They're stuck. They're rusted stuck. So I'm going to use my ultrasonic cleaner, which there's a link in the description on these videos to Vever, where I got my big ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, and I really enjoy the big one. I've actually used it on the last couple saws that y'all are going to see. Well, you've seen the 288. I didn't have to clean that much on it, but I did clean the oil pump. There's another bottom end sitting over here y'all have not seen yet. I've used it a lot. I did use it. I built a new bottom end, but I've used it on a lot of the other parts. And I really enjoy it. And I, I appreciate them sending it to me. But we're going to attempt to clean these up. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in the ultrasonic cleaner. And I know some people are going to say, Hopper, I don't have one. I understand that. Some people don't. But I've got a wire brush. I've got a sander. I've got a blasting cabinet at my disposal because I've been getting this stuff for years and years and years. But what I want to do is I've got a mixture in my ultrasonic cleaner that's simple green, water, water. It's, it's primarily water. The second most ingredient is simple green. And the third most ingredient is vinegar, white distilled vinegar. And then there's a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid in it. Uh, what I want to do is put this in there and see if it'll break its jaw loose and make it where some things will move. That's It's what I used on this chain that I got over here that I freed up. So uh, I'm not going to film... It's sitting here running in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Turn it on. I'm probably going to run it for probably close to two hours. I'm probably going to run it an hour on one side and then an hour on the other side. Now, I'm not putting it in the big ultrasonic cleaner because I do not have vinegar in the big one. The vinegar is in the small one. And the reason that is is if I put vinegar in the large one and I clean magnesium, it dissolves the magnesium. Vinegar will dissolve magnesium. So I can't put magnesium in the vinegar solution. So it's non-vinegar in the big one, vinegar solution in the small one. So we're going to throw this in there and turn it on. Now, I guess I could just flick the button. Let me do that. This one has water. Simple green, vinegar, and dawn. 
This one has water, simple green, and dawn, no vinegar. Uh, if you want, there's a link to this one down in the description, and it is extremely nice. I really do like it a lot. This one here, I like it too, but it's got a little more age on it. I'm gonna stick this down in here first. Try to get it in there as far as I can. We're gonna cut her on. All right, I'll bring you back when we have some results. Oh, I got, there you are. Come back over here where I can see you. I've had it running for about two hours. I hadn't even done this side yet. I just been running this side. You can see some of the chrome has come back. These things are really rusty, y'all. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna squeeze on them and see if they'll move some. Cause well, you see me, I hit them earlier and they wouldn't move. So, woo! Hmm. They moved. <laughs> See if we can get them open back up a little bit. Hey! Look at that. Good and new. Good and new. Derek could be proud. <laughs> oh, mercy. They're actually moving now. They are bent a little bit, but I think we can still, I think we can still salvage them and make something useful. I was gonna cook them till they're clean, but I think since there's so much rust, I'm gonna take them outside and blow them dry. We're gonna go throw them in the blasting cabinet. Hit them with a little glass and see what happens. All right. This is probably the first time y'all have ever seen inside the blasting cabinet. Hope I'm not too loud. It's kind of, I'm actually having to look at the screen. I don't know whether y'all be able to see much or not, but here goes something. I don't think y'all can see a thing. It's swirling so much, I don't think y'all can see anything. But I can't, I can't really see anything for the camera. The evacuation system is not strong enough for filming. But, all right. Y'all see what I'm doing? This is my blasting cabinet. I'm not going to sit here and keep recording because y'all can't see anything and that would be boring. We'll look at it here in a minute. <laughs> All right, now y'all can, you can probably see it a little better. It's really chunky. Really pity, really chunky. Like I said, I'm just doing this because it's not a, it's not something that uh, really has to be done. But you know, look, you can actually see the threads down in there now. Should we test some stuff? Let, let's do that. I got a phone call coming in. Let me answer that and then we'll, we'll try some penetrating oil. All right, we're back. I had a phone call. So, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this thing. And I don't know if y'all can see it in the video, but as I tap on it, stuff falls out. I'm just trying to get the majority of it out of there. Cause it's uh, I was figuring this was gonna be a real problem, but 
All right, she's tight. Let's put a little, uh, let's put a little bit of this free all on it. This is good stuff right here. I'm going to just put a little bit of this in there and get some soak on it. Just going to kind of tap around. The, I'm trying to get where y'all can actually see what I'm doing. This is a four ounce hammer, y'all, so, you know, it's not. It's a little bit bigger than the small one. This is the one that I normally use, and these are the, this is the difference. So, two ounce, four ounce. So, if it sounds like I'm clobbering it, I'm really not. I really ain't clobbering it. If I want to do that, I get the 32 ounce hammer. It's this times eight. I think this is a pair of my cousin's old pliers. Uh, seemed like I remember him having this pair a long time ago. It's still a there's still a good bit of stuff in there. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it over here right quick. And I'm gonna stick them in the in the vise and grab the end and try to twist it a little bit. And I'm not gonna carry the camera over and show y'all that. You know how to put something in the vise and twist it? I'm just gonna give it a little bit, and if it don't work, I'm gonna throw it back in the cooker for a little while, and we'll get after it again. Hey, I know y'all ain't gonna believe this. For y'all, little pliers in the vise. Now, it's not clean. What I did was I turned it, and there was more rust on the back side of the screw, so I blowed it off, carried it back in there, and hit it in the blasting cabinet again to get the, the rust out of the threads. My mind is blown. I hope yours is. Mine is completely. I would have never in a million years thought that, that screw was going to come out because it literally looked like there was no threads left on it. Now, is the screw bent? I believe it is. Oh, yeah, I'd say she's she's food barred. You can see the bow in it. That is some of the worst I've ever seen. Now, are there any threads left in here? Not much, but you can actually see where I had it in the vise. There's not much left of it. And I cannot undo these like you normally can. You know how usually you can do this and get them out? Well, this set will not do that. And I, I don't really think it's by design. I think it's because this piece right here is wallered out. Look, look how deformed these things are. Yeah, they're pretty bad. <laughs> I'm more or less doing this just because I want to. And these, these, these did belong to my uncle and my, my cousin who've long since gone and left us. So... I just happened to find them down there in the bucket and I'm, I seen them and I'm like, wait a minute, I remember those. So I'm gonna just try to fix them just because. I'm gonna have to straighten them because if you can, well, it doesn't show up well on camera, but they're kind of like that. There you go. See how they look level? And you flip them over this way, and they don't, cause they're they're bent <laughs> like that way. They're bent pretty good, but 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them back in the cooker for a little while and let them do some more cleaning. And I might do a little straightening on them before I throw them in there. I don't know. Like I say, they're just... We're not going to do that. No, no, we're not. I was just thinking about welding up all the pits and regrinding them, making it pretty. And I'm not going to do that. That would take the, the fun out of it. They're actually so bent they won't even I'm probably gonna have to cut this rivet right here out and make a new one because I'm gonna have to take that handle off and well we'll see we'll see I'll bring you back here directly all right y'all I've been on the phone like so many times today it's unbelievable but here's what we got going I found this this is a 14 millimeter not 14 millimeters 7 16 by 14 threads per inch. This is the nut. This is a bolt. I've already turned the end of it down. And I'm going to turn the shoulders off of this bolt just a little bit so that uh, we can weld it on the back of the uh, the vice grips. So I'm going to try to get a little shot of this. I'm holding the camera right now. So, just gonna go in a little bit. I'm trying not to get too crazy because I've got to uh, screw this nut back off of here. So, I'm just going to turn it a little bit round so it just don't look like an old nut on the back side of it. And hopefully everything will look presentable when I get done. I'm going to call that good, I think. Oh, there's still two flat spots on it. Take one more pass, see if I can knock it down. There we go. See that ribbon coming off there? That means we're getting all of it. Right now, I want just a little bit of chamfer on it, so we're going to look over here, get the chamfer tool, crank it up in there. Sorry, y'all, I'm not the best at holding and filming. Hold on a minute, baby. Can y'all see that? I'm going to put just a little chamfer on it, and that's it. All right, I'll bring you back in a minute. All right. I didn't film the, the welding. I didn't try to go for anything more than just getting it welded on there. Because it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's not, it's not pretty. I hung a spring in there. It's not pretty. It's not supposed to be. It's just... Trying to just make it where it's functional. I didn't make a knurled knob or anything like that. This was a bolt that was the right length. Uh, and I'm I'm way too much time invested in this now as it is. But we're gonna this is the die I used to thread that one piece earlier, so get her down there about there and There we have it. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the one thing about these vice grips that was always goofy is it was always hard to unlatch them. But I got most of that cleaned up and I got them straightened up pretty decent. They're not near as crooked as they was. 
I think when the jaws is all the way in, there's just, well, the, the bolt that I use is basically the same size as the one that come out of it. Oh, I was doing that off. And the neat thing about this one is now you can tighten this up. And this is an actual nut, so it's a whole lot better than it was. They, uh, they're not perfect. They're not. I ain't gonna lie to you and try to claim it they are. They are nowhere close to perfect. Will I use them? Yes, I will. This is the pair that I normally use. I've had this pair for a long time. Me and, uh, this pair was a pair that me and my cousin done years ago because we had something that was stuck and couldn't get it out. And I made, I welded this on here and we would put this on the end of a uh, slide hammer and clamp it and snatch stuff off of it. But I still use these. I've had these for, I have no idea how many years that they're, I mean, we welded that on there with a stick welder. That's how long ago it's been. <laughs> that was a long time ago. And this was a pair that belonged to him too, and they're basically the same size. They are the same. But this is not an actual pair of vice grips, I don't believe. I don't I don't think it's an actual pair of vice grips. But nonetheless, there they are and they function. I should have welded a little more on there and then done some grinding on it, but wasn't that worried about. It. I just wanted them to I just wanted them to function there. They're still a little snug because I took some of these rivets, I hammered the rivets a little bit to tighten them up. I really need to take this piece out and fix the end of it, but I'm not going to do that right now because I don't have any more rivets and I wanted to get them done today. And I didn't want to make my own rivets. All right. Well, that's all we got for today. Uh, Merry Christmas, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, if you do, Tell me the kind of stuff you'd like to see because I might do a little bit of different stuff. Some of the stuff I do and I never film it because I don't know what y'all want to see. But if you enjoyed it, let me know. Uh, and like I say, everybody have a Merry Christmas. And we appreciate y'all. All right. Y'all have a good day. Stay safe. Be kind. Treat each other the way you want to be treated. God bless. Remember, Jesus loves you. Bell Hopper out. Bye.